Hello and welcome to the Caterham stand at the NEC Autosport Show 2011. My name is Ansar Ali and I'm Managing Director of Caterham Cars. Today's a rather auspicious day because we have unveiled a brand new Caterham to the press and the public. And it's a, a, a very new addition to the iconic Caterham 7 that those of you who know what the Caterham brand is about, which is the Caterham 7. Uh, the new product sits very comfortably alongside the 7. So the car today that we have unveiled is the Caterham Lola SP300R. Perhaps a bit of a mouthful, but uh, the name uh, carries a lot of the messages. It's a race car and track car. Um, very focused and it has been designed in conjunction with another iconic British sports car manufacturer, Lola Cars. Uh, the car weighs in at about 550 kilos. Uh, it has a 2 litre Ford Duratec engine which is supercharged. Uh, so the car will be propelled to 0 to 60 in about 2.8 seconds. Uh, maximum speed is around in excess of 180 miles an hour. So the car lives up not only in terms of its strikingly good looks, uh, but also in terms of its performance. It remains true to Caterham's philosophy and DNA of having a car that is engaging, that is high performance, that is value for money, because the car that you see behind me has an all-inclusive price with a specification of £60,000 plus tax. Uh, and for that money and for that performance, we're very confident that it will be a market leader very shortly. So all in all, a very exciting day for Caterham Cars and uh, a, a very new addition to the Caterham family, both for our customers, both in the UK and abroad. Um, my background is automotive and um, I was uh, general manager at Lotus Cars and then literally I got a phone call literally out of the blue from uh, a corporate venture company uh, looking to acquire uh, a small car company and they asked me whether I would be interested in leading a management buy-in. So that decision process took all of about 30 seconds on the phone and it's taken me near on six years to confess to my wife actually how it happened. Um, but six years later, to the day by the way, 13th of January 2005, I led a management buy-in of an iconic sports car manufacturer. I left one to join another and uh, it's a very exciting opportunity. It's a dream come true for any petrol head and I'm just the lucky one to be there at the right time. The, the, the chain, there, been, there are many similarities between obviously Caterham and Lotus, both in terms of it, obviously the provenance that the Caterham 7 originates from the Lotus 7. Um, obviously the, the brand philosophy of performance through lightweight and form through function. And just having an enthusiastic and very loyal set of customers. Uh, in that sense, the two brands are almost identical. Um, the world, however, has moved on and uh, Lotus cars are now embarking on a very, very uh, aggressive and very confident strategy to take the brand another step forward and I wish them all the well and all the best. Caterham Cars, we know what we're good at, we have a niche and we will be sticking to our niche with obviously a few tweaks here or there, um, but that's the, uh, that's the thing that excites me the most about taking, testing the brand, where it can go, where it can't go and I have a fantastic set of just not only colleagues but we've got a very loyal set of customers that will tell us soon enough whether we're doing the right thing or the bad or wrong thing. Oh. 2010 was a record year for Caterham Cars. We built in excess of 500 cars and uh, the SP300R that you see behind me we're setting very realistic and pragmatic volume aspirations. We want to send up a we will be setting up, I should say, a UK single series championship for the SP300R for 2012. We will also get demand from track day enthusiasts, both domestically and abroad. But at the moment, we will be limiting production to around 25 units a year for the SP300R. And the reasons for that are we want to keep the product exclusive, and we also want to keep, make sure that there's 
the re residual value, that the product retains monetary value for our customers, which again, existing Caterham customers today recognise just what phenomenal residual value a Caterham 7 has, and I'm sure the SB300R will be no different. We have no plans, immediate plans, to do a road legal version of the SP300R. That's because we wanted to focus specifically on the race and track day market. That said, we're obviously going to gauge demand and reaction, and clearly Caterham has the expertise because we are the world leaders in making race cars that are road legal, because that's what the Caterham 7 is. So, never say never. Well, the, the future is exciting as the product that you see behind me. Um, we're, um, we, we're a, we are an iconic company. We are uh, over 50 years old, both in terms of design and as a company. And yet we're very young at heart. Uh, we've got very young, enthusiastic people working for the business who, like me, want to take this business forward. So um, this, the SB300R is, is just the start. We're going to be realistic about what we can achieve stick to what we can do, what we're good at, uh, without stretching ourselves. And uh, yeah, we will be, however, over time looking at other opportunities. Oh yes, well Lotus, of course, I, I used to drive Lotuses all the time and it was always a pleasure, uh, no, never a chore. I love the Caterham 7. Uh, in fact, I've driven Caterham 7s more abroad than I've driven in the UK. And not for effect, but the one that gives me the biggest grin factor is the Caterham 7. There is nothing like it. Uh, the raw driving experience, the engagement, um, and the grin factor. Uh, it, it's a very Marmite car. I think you either love it or you hate it, but I'm fortunate that 99% of our customers who drive it love it. And long may that continue. Uh, money no object, Aston Martin DB4 Series 2.